Hi, I'm Vivian. And I'm Jason. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series Bob's Burgers, and then we create a themed burger based on that episode. This week we're talking about Season 1, Episode 13, Torpedo. Season 1 finale. Yeah, our Season 1 finale. That's exciting. We've made it through one season, Jason. We made it. (gasps) We made it. Did we get a break? No. Oh, okay. (laughs) We truck forward. Yeah, we keep moving. We keep trucking. That has nothing to do with this episode. Is there a baseball like version of that? Like a keep pitching? Keep your head up off the mound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have a thing. <laughs> this episode was written by Dan Feibel and Rich Rinaldi. And the director was Kyung Hee Lim. And this episode aired originally on May 22nd, 2011. We have one new voice actor this week. Robert Ben Garrant does the voice of Torpedo Jones, and he also does the voice of Critter, who is one of my favorite minor characters on this show. We haven't met him yet. No, we haven't met him yet. We are going to four or five. But he has the exact same voice in both characters. Yes, he does. (laughs) So of course, as I'm watching this episode, all I can think of is Critter. And David Herman, who does the voice of Mr. Frond and Marshmallow does the voice of Angel in this episode, one of the other baseball players, who only speaks briefly, so just a small line. So the store next door was Chris's Brisses. That's cute. Fantastic. (laughs) I love it. I'm a little upset they didn't do, like, a little neon sign in the window, like maybe a pair of scissors snipping or something. Oh, gross. I thought it would have been a little bit funny. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Maybe a bit too on the nose. Yeah, you would have pushed it further. If you were in the writer's room, you would have been like, we can really go with this. We can go there. Yeah. Let me go there. The exterminator van was Rats All Folks, and I believe it's the last time we see that. It is the last time. I checked Oof. season two, episode one, just to see that we had a different exterminator the van, Belchies. and we did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Rats All Folks, we'll see you never. Yes, we have enjoyed our 13-episode run, but, you know. Time to let a new exterminator company in. Yeah, exactly, because you're clearly not doing the job. Yeah, you you keep coming back. Yeah, you keep coming back. What's up with that? Hmm? Hmm? We've got one burger of the day, which is Take Me Out to the Burger, and it comes with peanuts and Cracker Jacks. They even zoom in on the name. Just in case we missed it. Yeah, which they've never really done that. It's kind of nice of them for mm-hmm. people like us looking for the name. Yeah, okay, we see yeah. the burger. Gotcha. And also, I had to look up what Cracker Jacks were because I didn't actually know. And it's caramel. Like caramel corn, right? Yeah, it's like caramel molasses flavored popcorn. Right. But it also comes with peanuts, so it's just like double the peanuts, I guess. You never bought Cracker Jacks as a kid? No. They come in a little box, and They're, they have a little toy in. They it. have really? Yeah. No. Yeah, you go to the store you can right get now them in and Canada? buy them. Absolutely. I thought they were just American. No, you got a little toy in them. Oh, I yeah. felt like I just never got them because they were American. No. Oh. It's basically just caramel corn. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't feel like I'm missing out on much then because I'm not a big fan of caramel corn. Okay. Yeah. Moving right along. Mm-hmm. Bob buys ad space at the local baseball field, but is a little disappointed in how small his sign is. At the game, Bob sees his role model Torpedo playing. Gene wants to participate in the mascot races, so after the game, Bob asks Torpedo to help make it happen. Meanwhile, Tina is infatuated with all the butt slapping going on between teammates. That is one (laughs) heck of a disappointing ad, I have to say. It is so unfortunate. He mentions that he wishes he could do a urinal cake ad, and I have to ask, what are urinal cakes and why are they important? (laughs) Why? What? No, I don't understand. As a woman, you know, with... Okay, I think with that's, that's fair. certain parts, I don't need to use a urinal. Right, okay. I don't know. So, I'm not really sure of the logistics. From what I gather from using several urinals in my lifetime mm-hmm. is... Are you a urinal connoisseur? Do you know a lot about No, that? I'm a stall man. <laughs> oh, you are? Oh, 100%. Why? I don't know. I like Jason, my privacy. Jason, tell us your deepest, darkest I don't secrets. like to <laughs> touch sides with people while they're going to the bathroom a lot of the time urinals are way too close together oh and that is no fun hmm. and then you get some guy that comes in and sees like five free and then stands right beside you oh no no 
<laughs> you're like, no. get thee away from me. No. <laughs> so urinal cakes, they are, you know, spherical objects. They're like hockey pucks. Okay. And they sit in the urinal on the bottom. Mm-hmm. And usually they're activated, like, their aroma. So They act- have an aroma? That's what they're for, to mask oh the God. smell of pee. So when people pee on them, it... Like releases the aroma smell. So what is it like flowery? Yeah, it's usually like. Or is a it like a dude thing. smell, like gunpowder? <laughs> <laughs> and it smells, brisket. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever, dude smells. Smells of lumberjacks and brisket and gunpowder and explosions. <laughs> exactly. Right. So that's basically. It what smells they are. like a Michael Bay movie. Basically, is yes, what I'm saying. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> that's pretty much what a urinal click is. And getting oh. urinal cake advertisement, man, you're going to see some foot traffic in there. Is that, like, actually a thing? Do people put... Okay. Good. They, so they put ads seen. in front of the urinal, like, on top. Oh. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. But urinal cakes, like, in the shape of, like, a Bob's Burger would be fantastic. Uh, oh. But except then, you'd no, be looking you'd be, at yeah. yourself peeing on no. it. It's kind of gross. Yeah, it's no yeah. good. So Bob has another interest. I feel like I'm learning all these things now that I'm actually paying attention. Baseball. Yeah, he likes baseball. Baseball, models, what else? Two things Is that pretty that, much it? That's two it. things that we've never heard from again. Yeah. <laughs> because he doesn't have time, Jason. This is why. Right. But he seemed to be a pretty big fan like 15 years ago. He was wearing mm-hmm. the hat. Well. That hat, the torpedo hat. Yeah, that thing was insane. amazing. I want one of those. Oh, absolutely. Um, And the shirt. Mm-hmm. You know, he was, he was gung-ho about it. It's kind of nice to he see. He really was. Yeah. Overall... How do you feel about the episode? Meh. Meh? Meh. I'm not a big baseball fan. Or, like, at all of a baseball fan. <laughs> or a sports fan in well, general. That's fair. So, But I feel like it wasn't really about baseball as so much as it was about morality and ethics. Yeah, actually, I did feel that. And I sort of felt like, oh, what podcast am I doing right now? Yeah. Am I doing Forking Bullshirt? If you don't know what Forking Bullshit is, it's our podcast on The Good Place. NBC's The Good Place, starring yeah. Kristen Bell and Ted Danson. Watch it. Yeah. Season one's done. You Watch it. You can find it. the episodes on our website, multiverseradio.ca. Done. Done. How efficient are you, Jason? Anyway. Fantastic. Anyway, yeah, so it felt like like a moral lesson, but it also felt really, really heavy-handed. I never... So. I had only watched this episode once since it came out mm-hmm. many years ago, and it definitely wasn't even on my register when I think about Bob's episodes. Yeah. And watching it again, I appreciate it a lot more. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of parts that I really like. One of my favorite Linda lines is in this episode. Ooh, gold medal. You should get that bronzed. Oh my God. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, there's also a lot of great improv moments and banter with the family that I absolutely love. That's true, yeah. And That's I really do like Torpedo. I think he's fantastic. I think he's okay. I guess the episode itself is just not... Uh, it's not a favorite of mine, but I don't mm-hmm. think it's bad. Right. It's just kind of one that I don't really remember. Tina and Louise don't really have a whole lot to do this episode. Mm-mm. And Louise is storyline isn't isn't really there no No, Louise is really she's good for a couple of jokes and that's about it yep and tina feels forced yep and really really uncomfortable (laughs) not a fan yeah a little bit we'll get to that yeah we'll get to that yeah we'll get to that um i do want to mention bob's explanation of who torpedo is Mm -hmm. and his skadoosh oh yeah skadoosh or skadooch but I don't know. Did you say something different? <laughs> they sounded the same. Sk- Skadoosh with okay. an S-H or Skadooch with a C-H. Yeah, that still sounded the same to me. <laughs> so it's both and neither. Yeah, yeah. His explanation of what it was and when it was on, it was on. And when it was off, it was like hitting candy out of a baby's hand with a bat. <laughs> and the banter, the back and forth banter between Bob and his kids and Linda, like, oh, why would you, was he kicked out because he hit a baby with a bat? Like, And Bob is just so frustrated. He's just like, no, I, I'm done talking with all of you. 
that's exactly my reaction I would have. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of those moments are improv by yeah. everyone. And it just feels so fluid and natural. Mm-hmm. You just can't write that. It, no. just, it felt too good. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I noticed quite a few moments like that in this episode. Mm-hmm. And it made me really happy that this is one of those shows where their actors actually record together. Yeah, and they allow you know? the, that type of freedom. Exactly. Yeah. That's how we get these moments. Yeah. Um, I looked up this split finger skadoosh. Uh, it turns out that it's from Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's not <laughs> at all a baseball move, pitch, throw, whatever they call them. It's not one. It's literally from Kung Fu Panda. Really? Yeah. Is it like a Kung Fu move that they use in it? No, he throws a ball at one point and then he calls it a skadoosh. Oh, okay. Well, there That's, it is. Well, yeah, but... So he throws a ball. Yeah, but it's not a baseball. They're not playing baseball, He's but it's a kind of ball. Throwing a ball. It's like a ball of energy from what I gathered. And he calls it a skadoosh. Yeah, calls it a skadoosh. That's fantastic. And I guess Bob Burgers ran with it. I actually didn't realize that Kung Fu Panda was that old because it came out in 2008 and this movie or this episode came out in 2011. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Garrett, for the knowledge, by the way. I had to ask him because he's a big fan of sports and I know nothing. And Googling it didn't really give me any results. It just kept saying Kung Fu Panda, but I kept thinking, well, what does that mean? So, yes, thank you for your sports knowledge and also knowledge of movies. <laughs> Always appreciated. Bob cooks a burger specially for a torpedo. Gene wins the mascot race but forgets his father's restaurant when talking to the crowd. However, Torpedo promotes the restaurant and the whole team shows up. Tina volunteers to be ball girl for the Wonder Wharf Wonder Dogs and becomes close with the team members. When Torpedo gives Bob the game-winning ball, Bob discovers Torpedo has been cheating by greasing the ball up with his burgers. Oh my god. When Gene forgets the name of the restaurant, I could throttle him. Oh, <laughs> I, I was completely so frustrated. Understand. I'm like, Gene, 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 but no, Gene. Oh, what? No. Why are you so bad at oh, everything? Oh. <laughs> Honey, no, 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 no. Now, for me, this was the angriest I've ever seen Bob. Yeah, yeah, I think he so. He was yeah. furious with Gene. Mm-hmm. Like, he was absolutely almost scary mad. But he was trying to, like, keep it under wraps. I feel like he was trying to keep it together because as soon as as Linda says, you know, oh, it's it's fine, it's fine. He's like, oh, yeah, okay, you did good, Gene. Yeah, but... Oh, he's his blood is, like, boiling. If this was The Simpsons, Homer would be strangling Bart. Yes, definitely. No doubt about it. But I like that they don't do this on this show. He's just yelling, verbally abuse him. But that's the thing is he's not, I don't feel like he's being verbally abusive because if he was, he would be calling Gene an idiot. He'd be calling him a moron, saying you're useless. Like, he doesn't just say anything mean. He's just like, and... I don't understand what just happened out there. You froze. Yeah. This was important for me, you know, which is selfish of him. But I, I get it. I understand yeah. that frustration. So luckily, mm-hmm. Torpedo comes in and saves the day. I really do kind of love that moment, though. He's like, it's Bob's Burgers! Oh, my God! And he's just screaming, and you can hear him. Oh, just God. shouting it from the And you see him clock. just in the background, just yeah. completely flipping out. Oh. And then afterwards, he's like, what? You work in it every day. You live above it. How did you forget the name? And Gene's like, well, I think of it as Dad's Burgers. <laughs> Because I call you dad. Oh, that's honey. No. out of the mouth of babes. And, and the funny thing is that's actually a pretty good reason. Yeah, it To is. forget. Because it's not like he really pays that much attention to what the restaurant's called. He just and works And he thinks there. of his dad as dad, yeah, not Bob. Exactly. I work at my dad's burger shop. Yeah. You were talking earlier about how everything feels really natural and... Fluid. Has a great, yeah, has a great flow in this yeah. episode. And one of those moments for me is the tombstone joke. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I love that this, I love that the characters on this show laugh at each other's jokes and they don't always try to one up each other constantly. Like in a lot of shows, you'll see someone offer a joke and then the next person offers another joke and another joke and another joke. And it's just kind of like we're being berated with jokes. Yeah. And they can just have a conversation here. Yeah. They like, react to each other saying something funny or something weird and 
you get moments where they guffaw at mm-hmm. a joke. And, and they appreciate each other. Yeah, exactly. And it, it felt really organic, really sweet. And that moment between Bob and Linda reminded me of our Burger of the Week segment. Oh, yeah. Where we'll tell each other our punny burger names and then half the time, like, laugh really hard at our You're ridiculous like, no, names. yours is better. Yours is definitely better. Yeah. And then we, we offer each other up as, like, the winner. Right. You know? So, it was a sweet moment. It reminded me of the two of us. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, death the so week. Maybe <laughs> well, we'll it, be it like that in the re- future. It shows mutual respect. Yeah. To mm-hmm. be able to do something like that. And it's uh, it's important. Mm-hmm. And I love that Bob loves Linda's suggestion, like, order up. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Keep that. He's like, no, no, no. That's a good one. (laughs) We'll we'll use that one. That one's better. (laughs) That's my wife, guys. I love my wife. She's funny. That was sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Did you like the mascot names? Sammy Sea Lion. Captain Pell I Can. (laughs) Bad. (laughs) Like, so bad. (laughs) They sound like the names Mr. Frond would come up with. (laughs) Hell, I can. <laughs> positive affirmation, Pelican. Oh, yeah. cute. I like it. Yeah. I think it's cute. Yeah, I like their names. Although I didn't catch the name of the cotton candy. I mm. I watched a few times. To yeah, I missed know. that as well. I don't know if he had a name. He's just the cotton candy. But He's very top heavy. Yeah. I like the fact that Gene wins purely by default. Yeah, yeah. Just until he starts cheating. Until he starts cheating. But we'll get into that in our next segment. So, the family gets front row seats mm-hmm. for the next ball game, thanks to Torpedo. Mm-hmm. And they get to see some amazing tattoos. They do. Was it baseball Jesus or baseball God? I think it was God. Yeah. Up there in the clouds with the baseball bat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. I like that. Some good line work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Conflicted about helping Torpedo cheat, Bob discusses the matter with Mr. Fish Odor, who tells Bob all the amusement park games in Wonder Wharf are rigged. Baseball games are fixed, and even the roller coaster is built with shoddy materials. Bob is worried about bad karma, but Mr. Fish Odor claims there's no such thing. Bob then explains to his kids that it's not cheating, it's helping entertain people. So Tina and Louise convince Gene to cheat in his next mascot race. Yeah, see, this is where it starts to get a little too on the nose for me. You know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, I know. It's very yeah. predictable. And it's it's not that it's very predictable. It's just, it's not subtle at all. Like, Bob finding out that his role model is cheating is, of course, going to be upsetting to him. Mm-hmm. But then he goes to, like, the worst person to ask. Mr. Fish Odor? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Fish Odor is definitely, like, a shady dude. And I'm pretty sure that Bob already knows that. Mm-hmm. So he goes to the wrong person yeah. to, like, ask a moral question. Yep. He doesn't consult Linda about it, which is weird. Linda's okay with that, though. Yeah, but she She seems... even says, like, hey, your burgers are helping him win. Yeah, but then when he says, no, my burgers are helping them, him cheat, yes, he doesn't go to Linda and say, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm feeling kind of, like, wrong about letting him do this and helping him. I think that a lot of Bob's actions are uncharacteristic. In this episode? Yes. Okay. I don't think Bob would be okay with seeing the roller coaster being built with crappy materials. Yeah, stuff falling yeah, down. Like and screws and stuff and wood being taken away. I don't think he'd be okay with that. No, but I don't feel like he would do anything about it either, though. No? No, I don't think so. Unless his kids were going to go on it or something like that. But I feel like he's too focused on Torpedo at right, the moment. Okay. And we're not going to do that story, obviously, when we're doing the Torpedo story. But right. it doesn't feel out of character for Bob to kind of just be distracted. ignore that yeah. and be a little bit distracted by what's uh, what's really affecting him at the moment. But, I mean, he goes to Mr. Freshoder. It's not a great idea to go to him. Of course, he's going to tell him, yeah, go ahead and cheat. Because that's Mr. Fish order for you. We yeah. already know he's shady. And he's already getting know. a lot of money from having Torpedo doing so well in the exactly. baseball games. And Mr. Fish is all about Mr. Fish, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> and then to have the kids say, well, like, oh, that's cheating. And then when Tina says, oh, but dad says that cheating is okay when it's for entertainment, just feels really forced to me. Because mm-hmm. Tina's a good girl. 
she would not be okay with cheating. No, she wouldn't. No. And she's so not I in feel the future. Like, yeah, so I feel like that's out of character for Tina. Louise, yeah, her, for sure. Oh, no, absolutely. Louise would cheat till the cows come home kind of thing. Yeah. And Gene is impressionable enough that he would kind of take either side. Yeah, he'd go with whatever. Whatever, yeah. Whoever's talking to him last, because that's the one he remembers most. I don't know. <laughs> but I feel like Tina wouldn't go for this, so it feels out of character for her to do it. And then I feel like Bob... He's done this kind of stuff in the future. Like, we, well, he will do this kind of stuff in the future where he has a little bit of a, a crisis of like, well, I kind of need to do this bad thing for a good reason, though. Hmm. I'm thinking specifically of the episode where Tina crashes the car mm-hmm. and he He's decides to... Lie the insurance. Yes, to lie to the insurance. Right. So... That's a moment, but in that moment, Tina is completely against lying. Yeah. So this feels weird to me. Although maybe this is her learning her lesson. Her growth. Yeah. So how would you feel if you were Bob? Would you let it go? Would you want to tell people? I would let it go. Yeah? I think because it's it's not hurting anybody. And it's not Major League Baseball? Yeah. Well, it's the Baseball League of America, BLA. Is that what it is in this episode? I think that's what Louise says. Oh, okay. My dad's a scout for the Baseball League of America. Oh, (laughs) yeah, not a thing, honey. Um, If you were Bob at that moment where Torpedo's saying, well, I don't need your burgers. You know, I'll find my specialty whale blubber or whatever it is Mm -hmm. to help me keep going. Would you be like, all right, I wash my hands of this then? I think so. That's the end of my involvement. I think so. Hmm. I'm not sure. I've never been in that situation, but I think I'd just be like, I'm not helping you anymore. Dig your own grave. Yeah. I Hmm. told Mr. Fish Odor, I'm not going to call the police or anything. No, but just announcing it to everyone. Although really, we don't see Torpedo actually get any consequence for his actions. But he wasn't even really called out. Like Bob kind of briefly vaguely mentioned somebody who might be doing these things Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we don't see anything come from it i don't think it was obvious enough that people would get it yeah so that's funny i didn't really focus on that honestly because mr fish odor obviously faces consequences for his actions in this episode yeah his roller coaster fell apart yeah exactly but Nothing really happens to Torpedo, so mm-hmm. I feel like the show is telling us what he's doing is not that bad, because if it was a really terrible thing in their eyes, they would have made sure that Torpedo was kicked off the team or something to that effect. Right. The show might be saying exactly that. that yeah. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, I don't watch sports, but if it was something to do with the major leagues where, you know, they're getting a ton of money from this kind of stuff and they're... It would be a scandal. Yeah, it would definitely be a scandal. It's... You know, it would be the same kind of idea as a player using steroids. Right. But this is the minor leagues, and we kind of get the idea that, like, this team stays here. They're the Wonder Wharf Wonder Dogs. And they're probably just, like, hometown entertainment. So I don't feel like these guys are making a ton of money or really reaping a lot of benefits from this. Exactly. I wouldn't want to participate, but... I don't think I would start, you know, protesting and making Handing like websites. And fl- yeah, I'm not. I'm not going that far. So I don't think it would bother me that much. Out of sight, out of mind. Wash your hands of it. Done. Yeah, I don't think I would care that much. Tell people in passing if it came mm-hmm. up organically. Yeah. No protesting. No whole shebang for the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. No. Mm-mm. It's some interesting thoughts from a from a lighthearted episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But let's talk briefly about Mr. Fish Outer's incredible bathroom control. What even? Love it. This is another like bathroom thing that I wanted to ask you about. I didn't think there'd be so many bathroom things, but is that possible? Can you just like not hold it? Yeah, I wouldn't trust it enough to just go hands free like Bluetooth style. I would just. <laughs> I always <laughs> want. I always want to be in control. Like you never know. It could be a fire hose situation that okay, okay. suddenly gets out of hand, and you want to be able to make sure you guide it in the right direction. Okay. So he does have some really good control, for sure. Oh, and the fact that he's standing there with his arms on his hips. Yeah, the Superman pose. That is power. He is showing off how powerful he is. 
my god and his whole talk and walk with bob with his wonder dog hanging out <laughs> men are so weird what is with this this like weird it's so funny because bathroom dominance well stuff. watching that scene it. when he's with bob and then he says you know walk with me and he goes to the wharf as soon as he turns around to walk away i'm like wait he didn't zip up yeah, no, I know. Gonna, yeah, I they're not going to say anything. And then they mentioned it. It was like, oh, my, it's been. My wonder that was dog's so been. <laughs> I was so glad that they did that because I thought it would have just been like, oh, continuity. Like, it, you didn't even show him zipping up his pants. How unrealistic is this cartoon? <laughs> but yeah. the fact that they bring that up and make a great joke out of it is fantastic. Yeah. What did you think about Mr. Fishhunter saying, well, is it me? Is it abortions? Because that made me laugh really hard. Because it so- was. <laughs> Honestly, it made me laugh so hard because it was completely unexpected. I was like, I don't remember him saying that line ever. <laughs> the fact that what? the way he says it is great. Is it me? Is it abortions? <laughs> like, and not like a surprise thing. Like, is it me? Is it abortions? No, it's all in the way his delivery. That's true. Kevin Klein's delivery of Mr. Fish Odor is just on the spot. Yeah, it's perfect. Before we get to our next point, I wanted to make note of some of the other advertisements that we see. We see net advertising. It's better than nothing. (laughs) We see Jimmy Pesto's. Of course. Of course. And we see the knee specialist. And their slogan is, we'll get you back on your knees in no time. Which is terrible. (sighs) And we also get dateforyou.com. Get to first base. Which is great. That's kind of funny. Yeah, it is. It's perfect for a baseball advertisement. Yeah, it's, they're both terrible, but yeah. it's kind of funny. It's sweet. <laughs> the announcer bits yeah, didn't work for me at all this episode. No, none of them? Not really. I just, seeing seeing two announcers go head to head like butt heads and argue and stuff like that, it just seems very contrite. I feel like they weren't arguing, though. It was just one guy who was overly enthusiastic and the other guy who was clearly bored of his job. Hated everything. Yeah. Although then we get that nice, well, nice. Uh, then we get that funny moment at the end where the very enthusiastic announcer says, well, let's just say AA was a waste of time, <laughs> which is another terrible but really funny joke because it was so unexpected. Yeah, that was that was kind of funny. Oh. I just didn't like the rest of it. I don't oh, know. I just, okay. It's okay. It yeah. Wasn't... It didn't particularly entertain me, but then at the end I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, this is funny. Okay. Just because of that line. <laughs> All right, let's get to the end of our episode. When Gene admits to cheating during his race, Bob realizes he is setting a bad example. He stops giving Torpedo burger grease, but Torpedo says he's been cheating his whole career and nothing will stop him. Crushed, Bob tells Gene he can win without cheating. He loses and the Wonder Wharf roller coaster collapses. Karma's a real piece of work. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Jason wrote the uh, beat by beat here. <laughs> He's very pleased Thank with you. his uh, his closing line. <laughs> I was gonna say Carmen's a real. Yeah, I know. I, I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. Don't worry. I got. I got the hint. So yeah, this again. You know, it's just it's really on the it's nose. Very choreographed. You know exactly how it's gonna work out. There's and... it's, there's no subtlety here. Yeah, it's just Gene cheats. Bob feels bad about it. As soon as Fish Odor tells Bob karma doesn't exist when he's kicking the screws back under the wharf, you know that the coaster's going to collapse or something's Mm going to happen. Karma's going to come back and bite him in the butt. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have a, oh, I told you so moment. And, oh, look, we do. Yeah. Surprise. Mm -hmm. Surprising no one. Feels like this episode has a message. Really? And that's part of why I Really, a message. I couldn't tell what the message was. Hmm, is it that cheating is wrong? Yeah. That's the message, Jason. I'm glad you got it because it was so subtle. It's crime doesn't pay. No, it's cheating is bad (laughs) and you need to practice what you preach. I like the moments that you see Torpedo early on in the episode because every shot that you see of him pitching, Mm -hmm. he's doing one of the things that he said he was doing. Oh. Like he said, he's got stuff in his butt, he's got stuff in his pits and his nose. And every time you see him, he either puts his hand in his back pocket before he pitches or he rubs his nose before he pitches. Oh, yeah, I never you noticed can, that. You That's can look cool. at that when you watch it again, which you'll do immediately after this episode. Totally. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like a neat little 
mm-hmm. little clues foreshadowing. Yeah, there's a lot of there's there are a lot of really funny jokes in this episode. It's just too bad that the episode itself, the core of it, mm-hmm. isn't very exciting. At least not for me. I totally understand if other people are like really into this episode. Mm-hmm. I get it. There's some great moments. It's just yeah. We missed this last section, but when Linda tell is telling the family no more cheating in this house. Mm-hmm. Say goodbye to the Brazilian and say hello to the rainforest. Okay, I actually really like that we zoom up on Bob. That's funny. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> I think it's great. But Louise says, sorry, Dad. Does she know what that's in yeah, reference to? Yeah, no, see, I feel just... like just in general, season one of Bob's has a lot more jokes that are sexually... Like, a lot more sexual jokes. Right. Just in general. Mm-hmm. I feel like they do that more often, and then the show will just become a little bit more family-friendly, or those sexual jokes will become fewer and farther in between, and will be a bit more subtle. And you'll understand what the kids would actually understand. hmm Because at this point, anybody and everybody understands everything. Yeah. It's just selective during the writing process, I guess. Mm-hmm. So Louise should not know what a Brazilian no, is. No, she should And shouldn't. she shouldn't understand what her mother's talking about at this moment but she does for some reason so yeah i feel like in future episodes she would have if she was going to say anything at all she would have said oh like brought up something like oh what's this and then her dad would have been awkward trying to not explain Mm -hmm. it and like trying Mm -hmm. to shove it off but she'd keep pestering him and it would be a back and forth type thing It, it could be funny but in this it's just why does louise know what a brazilian is yeah and also is a brazilian cheating because that's well, not it's, cheating, Linda. What well, it's not natural. No, but it's not cheating. It's kind of like it's kind of like I'm not saying I agree, but when mm-hmm. people say putting on a lot of makeup is cheating. Yes. Because yes, you are when, falsely yeah. advertising what your face looks like. Yeah. Which is a whole bunch of malarkey. Right. So that's why she says that, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Linda. Stop shaving her pits and stop shaving her legs and... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Snore. So let's talk about Tina in this episode. Ugh. I don't love Tina in this episode. No. I feel like if I was any of the team members, I would be incredibly uncomfortable with a 13-year-old girl flirting with everyone and slapping their butts (laughs) constantly. It's a little inappropriate. Yeah, super inappropriate. Like... Uh, no, no. A bunch... That's the thing, is it's a bunch of grown men. But they don't react. No. They don't know how to react. So I I can totally buy it, because if I was in that situation, I wouldn't know how to react, so I wouldn't do anything. I guess. I just... I don't love it. And... And it's not focused on one single person, so that also makes a difference? Yes, that's true. She's not flirting with one particular player. And as uncomfortable as that scene is, it's nowhere near how uncomfortable that moment is when she's trying to tear the shirt off of the guy. She's She's like like, tugging on it. Yeah, she's saying, take off your shirt, take off your shirt. And I'm like, no, Tina, I know you're 13, but this is harassment. If this was a women's league and that was like Jean pulling on a woman's shirt to take it off, totally different. Yeah, but the thing is, it shouldn't be different. That's, That's my point. Exactly. You know, so it's just very uncomfortable. For me to watch. And then at the end when she's saying she took Angel's jock strap, That's just Gross. creepy. It's creepy. It's equivalent to a guy taking women's underwear. It's just creepy. I don't love Tina in this episode. Yeah. I think it's kind of funny. That moment where she's talking to one of the players. And she says, is it possible to be in love with 25 people at the same time? That's kind <laughs> of funny. Because it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's harmless. But... The other stuff just really reads as her yeah. being way creepy. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So overall, this is our last episode of season one. Next week, we're going to be doing season two, episode one. So what did you think of the first season of Bob's? I think it's extremely strong for a starting season. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of excellent episodes. When I think of top tens, I would even throw Art Crawl in there. Yeah, I think this season as a whole is very strong. Yeah. And is only lacking in some of the subtle personalities of the kids Mm -hmm. and the supporting cast. Yeah. We really expand on supporting cast in the coming seasons, which is fantastic. A lot of the classmates 
for Tina, Louise, and Jean aren't really there in this season. And they certainly grow. We see a lot of additions. We yeah. flesh out the town. Mm-hmm. And it starts to feel more like a town than it just does like of snapshots of locations. Mm-hmm. They wander around more. They go from location to location more often. And it just feels more down to earth mm-hmm. in the coming seasons. Yeah. But... I feel like they've got a really good base this oh, season. Yeah. Like they've got some fantastic episodes. I agree with you about Art Crawl. Still one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, Even now that they're in season seven. But yeah, it just, they become more grounded. The characters start to feel a little bit more real. Mm -hmm. We push away from like this idea that kids know all this stuff about sex and just kind of the awkward, slightly inappropriate jokes. We don't really go for those as much in the later seasons. And yeah, but I feel like it is a really strong first season. I did really enjoy it and it was nice to go through it again and looking at it a little bit more in depth this time but uh yeah i'm definitely looking forward to the future of bobs we don't compete as much with other cartoons in the later seasons Mm, so mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like they're trying to compete with the simpsons or south park or family guy and when it comes to vulgarity or crudeness of jokes or Mm -hmm. shocking so they really set their own tone in the coming seasons they know exactly who they are and they stand strong as one of the one of my favorite cartoon families on TV. Definitely. Or even one of my favorite families on TV. Yeah. All right. So let's get to our burgers. All right. I've got two burgers this week. I also have two. So look at us being matchy-matchy with the numbers. Awesome. Mine are kind of silly. <laughs> Mine are a little silly. One of them isn't actually a pun. Okay. Well, we'll see how that one goes. Because usually <laughs> I'm not a fan of not punny burger names. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, these things happen. Uh, all right. So my first one is... Foul ball. <laughs> Is it a chicken burger? <laughs> it's a chicken burger. Nice. Oh my god. Please tell me you didn't come up with that. No, okay, good. I didn't. Um, I like yeah, that, it's, though. it's a chicken burger with lettuce, tomato, and chipotle mayo. Okay. Mm-hmm. Foul ball burger. Foul ball. Obviously, foul F O W L. Of course. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'll go with my non pun first. It's okay. the Cheater Cheater Pumpkin Eater burger. Oh, yeah. that's kind of funny. Which is a little that's cute. It's, it's got pumpkin it's actually a vegetarian burger Ooh. so it's pumpkin mashed up with all like chickpeas and beans and stuff to make the patty mm. so and it's got sprouts and i forget what kind of cheese some kind of cheese did you look up a recipe yes i did oh interesting yeah, pumpkin it, burger yeah it sounded pretty good mm. i got a link to it so okay i'll put it in the notes all right um uh, my second burger is piggly field <laughs> what? Like Wrigley Field? Oh, I got it. Okay, I definitely got it. <laughs> Bigly Field. And it would be a, a bacon burger. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're really obvious titles. <laughs> Wait, first word? <laughs> Is it charades? You can't guess charades. Yes, you can. <laughs> It would be a bacon burger with lettuce, red onions, jalapenos, and spicy buffalo sauce. <laughs> Piggly Field. Piggly Field. Yeah. That's pretty good. I think that beats my second one. Okay. The tortoise and the pear burger. <laughs> what? Because it's a, a race? race? Oh my god. Gene had his mascot oh, races. Oh, cute. So I was like, oh, okay. what's, a, what's a good race? <laughs> and this burger actually sounds really good. Uh, it's got sliced pear on it. Uh, grilled sliced pear, blue cheese, and arugula leaves, and bacon. Which Ooh. I also looked this up and I have a link to it that I will post on Facebook and Twitter. Okay. So, Cheater Cheater Pumpkin Eater and Tortoise in the Pear. Alright, Foul Ball and Piggly Field. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... Just I like... I like Piggly Field, and I like Cheater Cheater Pumpkin Eater. Okay, so are we going to... We can rock, paper, scissors it if you want. We're going to play rock, paper, scissors for the winner yes, of our season one finale. Okay. Ooh, 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 what? ooh. We can straw poll our past 13 burgers and see which one wins. Ooh, season one winner. Yes. I like it. Total, okay. all the burgers combined. So, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Let's go. All right. I'm prepared. All right. Okay. One, two, three. Oh. Ooh. Vivian wins. I as win. As usual. With paper. Predictable Jason. 
Going for the rock. All yep. right. So Piggly Field wins. All right. Oh, I'm pretty proud of that one. So, <laughs> so I'm glad. I like your names, but I like my burgers. Mm, yeah, your burgers sound a little bit more delicious, but my name's the punny. All right. So that brings us to the end of Burger of the Week, a multiverse radio production. Thank you so much for listening to all of season one. Woo! If you like our show, please leave a rating and a review on iTunes. We really appreciate it. And if you leave us your name in the review, then we can give you a punny burger name to go with your name. Oh, yeah, we could. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a great idea. Exactly. So if your name is Savannah, Savannah's... <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna have to think about it. We're gonna it, have to think about it. I mean, we're not funny instantaneously. We no. have to actually work on these things. Yeah, this takes time. I mean, we'll do Savannah's bananas. It'll be like a sliced grilled banana burger. Oh, I like that. Yeah, we'll see. I just came up with that on the spot. So good job, Jason. All right. <laughs> so yes, please do that, and uh, and then tune in, and we'll we'll give you your punny burger name. Yeah, or if you send us an email with some thoughts, we can do the same for your name and your email. If you have any comments or you have a punny burger name that you want to share, something that you think that beats any of our 13 burger names so far, let us know. You can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can visit our website, multiverseradio.ca. And we will see you next week for our review of Season 2, Episode 1. The Belchies. Yeah. Woo. Bye, guys. Bye. Talking, talking, I'm making some noise. I'm saying things and I'm recording for a podcast. Who sent you that gift? Courtney. It's a good gift. (laughs) Bob buys ad space at the local baseball field. It's a diamond. (laughs) It's a baseball diamond, oh my god. Isn't it a field? Yeah, but... Can you call it a field? And I gotta scooch a little forward. Skadoosh on up. Scooch on over. Scooch on over, baby. No? Oh my god. Why do you always have to look at me with that face? Because this is my face. I've always looked like this. Yeah, I know, but I don't think you came out of the womb looking that exasperated. (laughs) No, it's probably just my mom. (laughs) I agree. Yeah, it feels natural, organic, real. Mm -hmm. How many more uh, adjectives can I come up with? Synonyms. I don't know. Go. No, that was it. (laughs) (laughs) That was it. All right. (laughs)